Hello, hello, mic check. Okay. I hear you. You hear me? Everyone hear me? Everyone hear me? Good. LC, LC. Hello, hello, everyone. All right, let's get this started. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Appreciate it. Loud and clear. Very good, very good. All right. Hey everyone. So uh tonight uh we're going to do a little bit something a little different. We're going to talk about uh we're going to talk about a little bit of war within. Uh and I'm joined by uh Excellent here tonight. A lot of you guys know who hello, Excellent hello. is. The GM of Acta Nonverba. It's our raiding guild. Very very wise man. Man of few words, but big thinker. Actually, yep. <laughs> Appreciate everyone tuning in tonight, especially on a Saturday. Uh you know, have better things to do but you're spending it with us so i really appreciate that um we are going to be talking a, a little bit about a few spoiler things so if you do not want to be spoiled about the war within this is not the stream for you we have put together a nice little uh small uh series of information uh for about what's coming up of what we've seen from the alpha data mining and uh, we're going to talk about it you're going to hear our opinions and um there are opinions so if you don't like them that's great but there are opinions um, we're allowed to have opinions. <laughs> exactly. It's always so, fun sharing our opinions. Yeah. So you could disagree. Yeah. Podcast style. Definitely. It's more, it is more of a podcast style. Absolutely. Stu. Um, we're going to, we're going to just chit chat on what we, uh, our first impressions on that first week of alpha data mining. So, um, without further ado, we're going to get started here. Uh, and we're going to start with, uh, we're going to start with X here. Oh boy. Okay. So, yeah. PowerPoint. <laughs> I haven't done this in high school, so you gotta give me some slack here. Um, all right. So we're starting with warbands, and and when they introduced or announced warbands at the at the BlizzCon, I was super stoked. Uh, yeah, me too. You know, I'm I'm somebody who has always switched tunes for raid to fill in holes when it was necessary, uh, especially now with how how in depth. The raids are with needing specific buffs or um you know a lot of fights in the past were needing a dk for specific situations where you had to <clears throat> bring ads together um so this 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 whole system in its entirety just feels so less punishing uh having to fulfill those roles um, because i've always felt like the warrior was my main um so yeah. I don't feel like I have to play two tunes, you know, to to keep up. Um, Absolutely. Do whatever I want on the main on whatever tune I'm rating on, and then I can play my warrior less less uh, intense uh, uh, behind the scenes. Um. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want to add something. I, I I definitely am looking forward to you know I I have a, a a lot of characters I think you know we were we were chit chatting both of us you know were. You know, we started really early in this game, and we have a lot of characters on our account, so it's going to be nice to, um, you know, see some of them be featured on that on that loading screen, and um, you know, just just to be able to move in between them more fluidly is, uh, I I think is going to be nice. Definitely. Um, so starting with reputations, I I know they just announced that the Dragonflight reputations for the most part will be, um made or included in war bands throughout the gate they'll be account bound um i know some of them were not included which personally makes sense to me uh one of them was like the Furbolg uh clan that you had to learn their language to yeah. to learn their their story or whatever um uh, that doesn't really impact rating the way that the other ones did with learning recipes or you know needing specific gear off of them which i don't think was too much of an issue in dragonflight but uh Reputations are always something that's I've always felt were too much of a pain to have to do on uh, multiple alts to get whatever you needed out of them. Especially if you're somebody who dabbles in professions a lot, which they seem to be more focused on that uh, with Dragonflight. It, it'll be nice to be able to accrue your reputations on one tune and switch to a new tune to work on your leather working or whatever your main tune didn't have. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, not be punished for that, you know. Yeah, I I, I love that. Um, that the reps are going to be more account bound. And what did they say? They said that um, 
Dragonflight reps with, um, is it 10.2.7 or was it uh, 11.0 that the Dragonflight reps are going to go to account and then they're going to start working their way backwards uh, compatible? Yeah, I, I know for sure it was starting with Dragonflight. Um, I think the rest of the process, for the, or at least the rest of the expansions, will take a little bit longer. Um, and I know that they mentioned some specific reputations would not, like the Furball one I just mentioned, that would not be factored into that, that those will stay character specific, which uh, it makes sense. They have the insane the membrane one where you yeah. needed to be exalted with uh, Gadgets and Booty Bay rep, but then also be exalted at one point with the pirates. Um, so they didn't want they didn't want one tune to be exalted with the booty bay, but then one tune to be exalted with the the pirates, and then they converge on each other, and you get the achievement automatically. Right, so it right. Makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah, part of yeah, some of them definitely do make sense. I definitely agree with you there. Oh, so it's eleven point oh, yeah. Oh, like yeah. pre patch, right? Yeah. Yeah, probably eleven point oh pre patch. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, in addition to the reputation being account bound i know they decided to remove human racial uh diplomacy which i i always <laughs> enjoyed the benefit of uh having my human warrior be uh more faster and great uh accruing that reputation and you know getting whatever i needed in the past at least with the the old system of friendly to honor to uh exalted or revered and then exalted uh so it'll, it'll suck to see it go, but at the same time, like, I understand they don't want everybody to be all swapping their tunes to human to, if there is some sort of power tied to, uh, you know, getting an item faster. Uh, the biggest thing that I, that I remember in the past was the, uh, in BFA, you had the reputation out in the, where you can be a mechanism. I can't remember the name off of my head. Um, but if you earned your reputation fast enough, you were able to buy a contract that would let you get more reputation. So if you were a human, you can go out there, you know, farm the shit out of rep, buy the pattern, and you were making bank. Yeah, Rust Bolt yeah. Resistance. Thanks, mm -hmm. Len. Um, you were making hand over hand over fist on, on money with being able to sell those as fast as you could. So uh, for me personally, like I said, it sucks, but I get it. So I'm not I'm not too heartbroken about it. What do you think diplomacy is going to turn into, X? Yeah, it's funny. I actually sort of thought about this for a little bit. And yeah, you know, what, what I would like to see them bring back is the old perception where you could see stealthies for a little bit. Not go full on like Demon Hunter, be able to see where they're at, but, you know, a little bit of enhanced stealth vision, uh, maybe like within a 10, 15 yard radius. And kind of like how hunters have like that stealth, uh, you know, track stealth and it gives you that slight advantage of seeing stealthies. You know. I still have yeah, that. yeah. I still have exactly. that toggled on uh, on my hunter just to have that slight advantage if I'm ever in war mode in the open world. Um, I I don't know if it if it's actually still a thing, but I do know like back in the day, if you had track stealth on, it did give you that little sense of like you know heightened stealth detection. That be that would be cool. That's an interesting take on it. Yeah, you know, honestly, um, the old one, at least when I played classic when they re-released it. I was using it a lot compared to like when you know vanilla was first out and you didn't know what the hell you were doing. Um, but I, I think it adds enough flavor to where like you can mess with it a little bit, but it's not going to be so impactful that hey, I want I need to swap to, to human to be able to see a rogue who's about to open kidney on me and, yeah. and kill me. So you want to give humans another PvP bonus <laughs> along with uh, every man for themselves. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, maybe maybe it works out for humans. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was that was just the one I t thought off the top of my head because yeah. it, it used to be a thing. Um, but they can go wherever they want with it. I mean, I'm, you yeah. know, we're, we're we're getting we're getting some wild ones with the allied races lately, so I wouldn't be opposed to you know just give me a, st a stat increase. You know, to bind yeah. it to my my PV, my cooldowns. There you go. Uh, okay, so moving on to the bank. This is I know this is a big one for you, Fev. Um, this, this is a big one for me, and, and I think every, <laughs> I think everyone in my stream knows that this is going to be a big one for me. <laughs> uh, so my my biggest thing the the immediate takeaway was how much it was going to cost. Um, but oh, once yeah. I huh. once I once I sat on it for a little bit, I think it was like what three point five million to buy all 
five tabs or something like that. Something, yeah, ludicrous. Uh, um, you know, I let it do in my head for a little bit, and like, I, uh, oh, three point one mil, uh, where I'm probably not gonna need all that space as immediately as soon as the system comes out. Um, I maybe buy the first two two tabs, two or three, what right? Blizzard does with it. Um, but but I'm always I'm always concerned with Blizzard because um. You know, when when they announced Dragonflight, they were you know trying to hype us up. Hey, guess what? We're giving you guys a reagent uh, bag that won't, you know, will be different from your main bags, uh, so you can put all your stuff in there and not have to be encumbered on your other bags with with these items. And then what does Blizzard do? They add like three ranks of every single freaking item in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> to, three to of the every herb, three of every exactly. mining note. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I know. Yeah. So a lot of those items didn't really fit in your region bag anyway. So uh, they ended up taking space in the main bags anyway. And to add on top of that, you're also getting what every profession in the book in your bags as well. Just from killing enemy, uh, killing beasts, you're getting meat. Uh, farming at humanoids get uh, the the uh, the cloth. Yep. Um, the the one that I personally would thought was like the most outrageous was inscription, because you had the herbs, you had the inks, you had the the inks or the not the inks the uh, the powder that turned into inks and the inks that turned into the other stuff and then it, it just escalated so much into. Like I said, you needed so much bag space for that for that professional loan. You know, I'm um, not gonna lie. I actually dropped inscription this uh, this expansion because of how awful it was. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, ever since they got rid of the glyph system, um, it it really felt like inscription is just kind of being in this weird space where like it's. They used to be for scrolls, and they took away scrolls. Yeah. So now it's more for staffs and books, um, but nobody really uses those staffs or books. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, it's just this weird space where it really, I feel like it really is not a place in the game. But you know, I, I would never be opposed to to them uh, getting rid of it. I think they just, like I said, need to tone down on what they're trying to do with them because they have the the trinkets, the dark moon stuff, the like I said, the staffs, the books, the uh, glyphs. Or not yeah the glyphs because they brought them back in a more or less impactful way and then on top of that you have the runes now the yeah the weapons weapon runes stones. Yeah. yeah so um like i said hopefully they can adjust with those items so that's that's basically where my head is with the bank like oh cool we're getting all the stuff that we can put from our alts in the bank and then i have this feeling that blizzard's just gonna be like hey here's a bunch of shit that you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't want to put here. oh i heard that you like to play alts on your warband uh here's every map for you <laughs> exactly put it in your bank <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so on top of that too i, I would say um my last point was like it'll be really nice to be able to uh dump all your mats in this bank so that if you're playing other tunes you don't need to go mailing between each your tunes to i think that's what they wanted yeah. to do yeah. yeah 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 that'll so, be nice on top of that you know it's um It'll make having to switch alts, you know, less painful, and you can just do it right yeah. to the bank. So you can focus on making your druid specifically farmer. Yep. Farm herbs, farm mine. Uh, uh, and then you just yeah, craft on, like your, miner, on your crafter craft. tunes, yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> My I'm bank. Sure you are. Bank space. Let me tell you, from a person who has his void storage completely full, both tabs. Who has max level bags and his reagent tab fully full? Um, let me tell you, I am somebody that is really looking forward to a larger uh, storage area for things. Um, everyone makes fun of my bags. If Scuba was on right now, Scuba would definitely be definitely making fun of the way that my bags are <laughs> in game two and how disorganized he thinks it is. <laughs> um, I love Scuba. Uh, Scuba, when you watch this, I really appreciate you. Um, yeah, my, my bags are definitely, they're organized for me. I know where things are in my bags, uh, to anyone else that is probably insanity. So yes, to have a lot more, uh, storage space, that's not void storage where you have to pay for things. I'm, I mean, we do have to pay for it, but you don't have to pay to take things in and out. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to 
to having a lot more space to to store things like some uh, sentimental things. Yeah, I I I never have that problem because usually by the end of the expansion is when I do the cleanup game, spring cleaning, clean yeah. all my bags of random junk. I'm gonna have to do that here soon too. So my 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 mentality is always like if I haven't <laughs> farmed for whatever this item was supposed to be used for by now, I'm probably never gonna. Do it yeah, I know we were we were talking uh, the other day and we we're just like saying like you know season four is coming right up. You know maybe it's time to. You know, maybe like week two, week three, it's kind of just dump all the mats type situation and just say, you know what, it's the end of the expansion. Bye, you know, and try to just get yeah. your gold right now. So, yeah, there's always this weird point during the middle of expansion where I'll, I'll re download uh, all the things and yeah. I'll find out like all these items are used for a certain achievement or a certain item that you can earn or a pet or a mount or whatever. So, I'm like, uh, if they're early expansion time period, I'm usually like hoarding all this stuff because. You never know what is going to pop up and you're going to need one or something. Well, with all the renowned vendors uh, for all the factions right now, you have to have like some of the crafting maps, like the ores and the uh, expedition supplies and, you know, some random like rainbow pearl or something like that in order to buy like, you know, a piece of like transmog or something off those vendors. So, you know, all yeah. the all the things would yeah, it's probably a nice time to probably grab that add on and uh, really start you know, going to all those vendors and grabbing what you want for transmog purposes um while things you know maybe right now is the time to do it while things are cheap before season four comes in or you know, i don't know how many people are going to be playing in season four because of uh time running but um you know i yeah, i think now is definitely that time when the market's really low to start grabbing all those transmog off those vendors yeah 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 that, that was one of the things too when i realized after i downloaded all the things was how much crap i still needed to buy the vendors that i needed like a bone here or a piece of leather here or you know random bullshit that you would never think to keep on your hand i know right yeah and, I, and everyone makes fun of my uh my my um reagent bag because it, it is full absolutely full so uh, yeah. i'm looking I'm looking forward to cleaning that out <laughs> <laughs> uh achievements you know I, there's not really much negative i can say about this i like i said i, I was somebody who always filled holes in our ray team and tried to you know play something that was needed on any specific fight, whether it was to provide a buff or some piece of utility. Um, like this last one, I played Enhancement Shaman for Wind Fury. Uh, so having all these achievements be account bound, again, like I, I think it's great. I think it really takes the pain of having to switch to another tune for the benefit of your group and not fall behind on what you would potentially consider your main for something that you played several years like I have. Um, the one thing I will say about the achievements, though, that I, I'm I'm, I'm kind of concerned about is how they're implementing these new achievements where they want you to do uh, certain things under certain roles. Where, like, do this. Uh, I think the one I saw was, like, clear all the dungeons as a healer tank in DPS. Yeah, I saw that one, too. Um, I know that they've done this in the past, in a sense, with the uh, Proving Grounds. Uh, but those I think were, it's just... It, those yeah, were fun. It, yeah, but yeah, that, that but the thing the thing that I'm concerned about is like those were built for specific content, like a specific scenario where you go and try to keep your little NPC group alive or kill the enemies or whatever. Uh, but this is more open ended to, um, you know, all the content where it could be kill the last boss on heroic on all three roles or kill the last Ooh, boss or yeah, clear, that'd you know, be rough. Get gladiator on your PvP characters on all three roles. Well. That'd... The tank one would be like <laughs> unattainable, but the other ones, yeah. Yeah, I can, I can, I can definitely see it going that extreme. I can also see maybe the benefit of um, the new follower dungeons uh, that we get. Um, you, you know, maybe you try like tanking or try healing um, if you're used to DPSing, and you just go into the follower dungeons and you just maybe you could get them that way if it's not going to be like tied to like you have to do a mythic plus or you have to do CE level content. You know, you have to kill like the mythic end boss. Um, I could see it being, yeah. uh, if it's a simple achievement, it'll be good because then you could just get it on alts in the follower dungeons and then you're, <clears throat> then it's easy. You know, it's not anything, um, too worry, too worrisome, but if, if it is, I don't think they're going to go to the extreme. I think they're going to you know, cater to the casuals on that a uh, little bit, but yeah, I, I could see your concern about it. And, um, it's definitely a valid concern that it could, you know, they could add this whole tab into the achievements and say, oh yeah, I killed the mythic end boss on all three rolls. And you know, who, <laughs> Not everyone's killing the mythic end boss on all three rolls. 
Yeah, exactly. And, and I would preface it like it's not really a concern of mine because I think if you're somebody who achievement hunts, you're gonna do it. Like it doesn't matter what what the what what is required of you to do it. Um, and for me personally, like yeah, it's concerned. It's 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 more like I could see Blizzard going in this direction, and and I I'd be curious to see how far they take that sort of achievement into you know applying it to playing multiple characters in general. So. That that's kind of where my head's at with it. I, like if it if it happens, it happens. I'm not gonna cry about it, but you know that's that's kind of where I'm seeing Blizzard going with it, though. Yeah, yeah. I I think it's gonna be a good thing, though. I think I think um. I don't I don't think it's gonna be that extreme. Yeah. Uh, currency exchange always always like I said the other ones like I can't. There's nothing I can really complain about with with the currency exchange except for one thing, and I'll get to that in a moment um you know not not having to email or email mail your own stuff to each other <laughs> like is, is, a, is a positive change for me you know like i'm hoping that you know they they, they don't they don't find a way to tax you on it or like uh yeah. the cosmic flux in the in, in shadowlands where you you trade it to your alt but you had to pay for it in a sense yeah i hate i uh, hate that tax you know get rid of the tax yeah so I'm hoping that that's not included with any of the currencies going into um into the war within, but you know i you never know with blizzard, so it's hard to say um my my one my one gripe with this currency exchange issue is that uh they said that uh flight stones and crest will not be tradable now yeah i I think gearing is fast enough to a point where it really doesn't matter. I I don't know what they're concerned about with being able to do that. I think if you're somebody who's trying to gear out as fast as possible, you're not trading your stuff anyway. Right. Um. So I think it really leaves this weird situation with Blizzard, where like we'll 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 make it tradable when it feels well. They technically haven't even done that, but yeah, they haven't done it this it, at all. Yeah. We'll make it tradable when it feels right, but then at the same time, it's like those times are always changing. Um, if somebody wants to invest a little bit of currency into their into their alts and they want to, you know, funnel them gear right off the bat when the expansion or patch comes out, I mean, let them do it. I don't, I don't see what the big issue is. I think when you're reaching near the 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 end of a patch and you're sitting on hundreds of of crests and you're kept on flight stones for like the past two a, months I, I think it's just it's silly yeah i i definitely agree i mean i'm somebody that that i'm in that situation i think we both are you know where we're sitting on um you know hundreds of aspect crests right now and you know we i we're both playing our alts now you're playing well your warriors remain but it was technically a raiding alt this season and right yep. i just jumped over to my shaman this past week and you know i'm i'm struggling gearing because I don't have the crests and, you know, and the flight zones are actually not as easy to obtain as you would hope they would be or whatever they're, I think they're calling them Valor Stones next expansion. Um, right. You know, it, or maybe like what they, if for like currency like that is like, give us like an accelerated Valor Stone um, acquisition rate and, you know, or like maybe at like the half patch, like the 0.5 patch, let us, let us trade them, you know, something, something to give our alts, um, you know, a chance to catch up and play our alts, you know, and, you know, I, I see them moving towards being more alt friendly with everything in the war bands here that we're talking about. I, I think adding a layer of the currency exchange without tax, because it is stuff that you earn, they shouldn't take away stuff that you earn uh, to help gear your characters up uh, so that you can have fun playing on multiple characters. Like if we're going towards this whole war band um, system, you know, that they, they keep talking about and that they keep, you know, hyping up and everything. Um, um, I, I, I really think that, you know, maybe in the half patch, you know, we, we open that, that crest, um, trading up to all uh, your war, like your war band or whatever, or even if it's like a max level person in your war band, like it has to be like level 80 or something like that. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that's kind of the point of, you know, what we're doing here today, Len, is like, we are giving our feedback and, you know, I'm definitely going to be posting this online later on. So. We're um, you know, we're kind of, you know, we're for people who have played the game as long as we have and at the level that we have, you know, I think um, you know, some some points of view is definitely um, 
and need to be heard and you know hopefully however however whatever medium that we can get it across and we're going to continue to try to do that so i definitely uh i definitely know a guy that can uh get some of that uh information over to blizzard so uh <laughs> if, if you know what i mean yeah well like i said I, th I think it's just i don't know what the concern is i wish they would be more open about it if there <laughs> if, it, if there is a concern i just think this whole process of like doing something when it feels right when not having done it from the get-go really made no difference um you know i think it just adds more problems than it solves so uh that's my where my head's at with that um we're bound on equip gear, I think is really cool. Uh, from what I read, you have a chance to earn war bound on equip gear every time you earn a piece of loot. So I think for me at least, I haven't seen any clarity on it. Um, but I don't really know what earned means in this sense, because if we're raiding and we kill a boss and you know I loot the boss, does that mean I earned a piece of war bound on it until equipped loot? Or does it mean that the gear has to be given to me in order for that to be considered earned or you know mythic plus is a little bit more straightforward because you loot the chest you either earn a piece or you don't um i think uh i think the war bound on equip i think leads a little bit more clarity but i think overall it's it's a good way to to gear your alts um oh I yeah think I, from what i read it was whatever content you're doing it's going to be one like tier less so if you're doing if you earn a piece of heroic loot it's gonna or hero loot. Sorry, it's gonna drop to champion level. So champion, yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's, I think it's a good system, it's a good chance to. I think there's an RNG with the loot though. Like you can loot a piece of plate, but the warbound item is gonna be cloth. So you have to trade it to a cloth person, <laughs> um, which is not too big an issue. Like I said, it's more loot for your alt that you didn't have to go earn on on separately. Um, and yeah, I think it's overall a good change. Yeah, I do too. I I like the idea. Um, I think I saw, I think it was it was either Kalamazi or Mister GM. Uh, they were, uh, they killed an open world mob, uh, a rare, and it dropped a warbound upon equip uh, piece of gear. I think it was a, like a piece of plate or something, and so they were able, and it was like a blue too. So, um, open world open world blue that they were able to put into their uh their war bank. I think they're calling it the war bank, which is a really cool uh word. Um, <clears throat> and, um, they, they were able to give it to another character on their, on their account, which is, that, that's great. You know, it feels, you know, it feels bad when you go and you kill a rare and it's got a really cool piece of gear that you can't equip, you know, and, you know, say it's like a staff or a weapon or something like that. And it's like, well, well, this character can't equip it, but now if it's war bound upon equip, it's, um, you know, you can actually use it on another character and actually collect that transmog, which like leads yeah. us into the next section of transmog. <laughs> yeah I, I was gonna bring this up too with the whole i I think what people found too was a way to kind of well i think blizzard addressed it before people figured it out but you were able to buy boe gear sell it you get the transmog and then try to buy it back but if you try to do that it actually turns into war bound until the quote years you can't you can't sell it so yeah I, that's a good change I, my too. other my other concern that you know i wanted to bring up earlier too was that um, I really hope that they kind of go into this very, um, very precautious because when 10.2 came out, um, people were farming mobs to get BOE gear to drop because it was like a collection of mobs that were force spawned and they would just AOE, you know, blow them all up and, and force them to respawn. They just kept farming them. So I, I, I would say my only concern is like somebody finds this type of scenario in, in the War Within where they can pull a bunch of mobs, force respawn them, and now they're funneling all this gear into a, into a, into their alts. Yeah. I, um, I'm definitely looking forward to, um, being able to just to collect all the transmog like i i think what they said is you, you can like grab your um your characters right now and start loading up on stuff and then you know if you're 
you know, say like if you're uh, on your warrior, well, you could collect bows on a warrior. That's a bad example. Uh, if I was on my shaman and I went and collected a whole bunch of bows, um, I can, since I can't equip them on my shaman, uh, come, I think, 11.0, uh, you can, you literally just learn all those trans models. So, um, yeah, which yeah is, that'll be nice. Which is really, really cool. Um, I, I, and, you know, for someone who I, I, I've never really played a cloth character, I tried a mage um, once and it didn't go well. Um, but, you know, never being able to collect any of those. Um, transmogs definitely um definitely kind of sucked that i lost uh, out on all those cloth transmogs here so um yeah so we got an ad coming up here in 10 seconds here um so we're gonna take a, a minute and a half break while this ad um runs and then we're gonna move on to our next slide here uh you know we definitely hit um a nice uh touch on the war bands here so we'll be right back after this ad <clears throat> And for those who you who are subscribed, you don't get an ad. So thanks for subscribing. I'm gonna try to edit. <laughs> I'm gonna try to edit this uh, screen here to uh, show the ad timer on 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 the Twitchy Twitch. I was gonna say, you know, you're showing your browser on the screen. Yeah, there's nothing on there. Bomb. Beautiful. So now we can see when an ad's starting. It says starting soon. Come on, run. Run, 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 run. Boom, there we go. Gotta love Twitch. Gotta make their money, right? Right, everyone? Gotta make their money. Money, money, money. Oh, we're going to Delve next. Little sneak peek. Big delves. Big delves going to delves. <laughs> Yay, capitalism. <laughs> Stu. I meant to set that up before uh before streaming tonight just to get that because I know um C do does C do do it one of those guys like they'll they have like ad the the ad in progress like on their screen I, I just I meant to do that beforehand because I, well I I knew it was in this um in the Twitch Creator dashboard I because I don't use the, the um I don't use this dashboard as often but it's it's actually nice having both dashboards up right now when we do um. Uh, see, not the jet ski company. No, see, do the shaman in World of Warcraft. I think he has something on his screen that tracks uh, tracks ads. So, I wish it was. All right, we're back. I think we're back. We back. Anything else you wanted to touch up on tra Transmog before we go on to our next slide, uh, X? No, not like I said, yeah. I think it's a good change. I yeah. just hope, uh, I know you have those people that are like, I earned my transmog the hard way, you know, back in my day. Um, but <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yep. All right. Next topic. Delves. What we got on Delves, X? All right. So Delves are an interesting topic for me. Um, I'm somebody who likes to do everything in the game. I'll do a little bit of PvP. I'll do a little bit of Mythic Plus. I, I don't push as hard as most people, you know, around me do, where they go probably to the 24, 25 range. I'm content with just doing, you know, the 20, 21 range. Um, and I do rating, of course, with you guys. Uh, yeah. So, like I said, everything I try to dabble in, I'd like to experience everything the game has to offer, uh, even the little stuff like pet battling or mount collecting. Um, the Delves will definitely be an interesting treat for me. Uh, I mean, I, I always was of the opinion that I wish they never got rid of scenarios from MOP. Mm -hmm. um, I did think it was a mistake that they made them as required as they did in MOP, where they were the when Justice and Valor were still a thing. Justice was, or Valor was best gained by doing scenarios. Um, 
like I said, small piece of content. It's not going to take up as much time as even a dungeon would. Um, so if these are anything like that, I, I'm happy with it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've seen some gameplay footage on it. I like that they are including uh, the little Torghast powers in it. Uh, I just hope they're not so impactful that it basically negates the entire difficulty of the delve that you're doing. Um, and I'm glad that they didn't go the same route as the digs that they did with the when the Niffin came out in 10.1, where you kind of had to figure out what you were supposed to do, um, you know, what you're supposed to dig, what you're supposed to click on, what you're supposed to, like, the little puzzles and stuff. They were fun, don't get me wrong. Um, but if you were to have to do that as repeatable content, I think that would be a little bit less enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Especially like uh, those those digs got a little. They could have been really difficult if you you know didn't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, when when they were first announced, and I didn't really have too much information on it, I was really hoping Blizzard didn't go the whole like thing, the thing that they did with Scenario is an MOP. They had the normal version, then the heroic version, and I don't think they ever did a mythic version, but I could be wrong. Um, but then I, I later found out that they were doing like the key system, basically like mythic plus where yeah you can increase the difficulty of the of the delve um and make it more challenging for yourself the one thing that i that i will say that i like about it is that you only have to do up to i think is level nine to get the most out of it in terms of gear gear yeah um, and then once you you can push beyond that just for the bragging rights i guess cosmetics and that they're, yeah they're yeah. even introducing a level 13 that is supposed to be from what i think i heard in the girls interview with them is supposed to be not equivalent to mage tower difficulty but because those were very spec specific but something more around that range so um like i said for me this will be something when we're not raiding or doing mythic plus or whatever this will be just another thing that i can partake in when i'm chilling not doing too much with with the group yeah I think the the tech that they uh they came up with where it's kind of like um like you said it's more scenario based but it's how seamless it's going to be where you kind of just like venture into the delve. I'm looking forward to seeing that tech and how like, you know, like you just open the door and then you're in a delve and it's uh, you know how they 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 keep um talking about no loading screens and stuff. You know how we didn't have a loading screen going to um um the underground cavern underneath us uh whatever its name is. I, yeah, Zeralek. Zeralek, yeah, you know, sorry. Yeah, I there, you don't go down there that often. I don't have any of the achievements down there. <laughs> and we're going into an expansion that is all underground, so yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I am looking forward to seeing how that, that seamless technology is going to work, Um, where you just like, it's like, oh, here's Bran, and Bran's here to shoot some shit with you in this uh, little cave. And hope you're ready. And oh, there's a boss. <laughs> hope you're ready. You know, type thing. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And and what I had gathered from the interview with the girl too was that like they they had had an issue, or they wanted to to be able to make it so we're like you can do if you're somebody who only does normal and heroic, which is not us. We we always do mythic. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't want you to feel forced to have to do delves to kind of keep up with gear in order to continue doing normal or just heroic so i'm curious to see how they walk that line because i'm of the personal opinion that you you can't really you know fix that that's something that people either kind of need to accept or you know just not do it um one of our guildies uh mendings has always mentioned with mythic plus that like you know i wish they separated mythic plus and raid so that you know mythic plus gear helped you do mythic plus raid gear helped you do raid content um that there was not needing to do raid in order to go do mythic plus and vice versa yeah um i know that you know pvp has a lot of their own you know situations with like using nothing but verse gear um i saw in the next expansion they're introducing uh they're reintroducing meta gems which one of them like three of them that i saw were specifically tailored to pvp uh, I feel like the only way you can really not, or the way you can really walk that line is by making the content specific to the content that you're doing. Um, I personally would not like for them to do that, 
Uh, I think it's it's fun to take gear that you accrued in raid and blast in Mythic Plus, and vice versa. You pumped a bunch of Mythic Plus, and you can carry that into raid and you know help kill, heal the bosses faster. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm of the mindset, you know, if you feel like you have to do delves in order to clear normal raid content, I mean, either accept it or you just don't do it. <laughs> That's yeah. not really there's not really a choice there. I think that we just have so many avenues of uh, gearing now. Um, you know, I mean, people were, you know, kind of like delves kind of remind me a lot of the um, the events that go around in the Dragon Isles right now. You know, I'm thinking of like, you know, the assault on Dragon Queen Keep and cooking and stuff like that, where the gear from it was OK at the start of the expansion, but then it became really negligible later on. Is it is is there going to be a piece of gear from delves that might help us? <clears throat> right in the beginning of the expansion yes i i think that's i think it's going to be very similar to that uh that type of system where people you, you know people were like going really hard in the paint uh you know trying to get their item level up to get the highest item level of the piece of gear um <clears throat> the drop off of a rare spawn or something like that just to get into raid for uh in vault of the incarnates um i think we might see that right like for the sweaties in the beginning of the expansion but i don't think we're going to see that um out of delves um for the entire expansion i think delves i i think ian touched on it it's going to be you do your delves you um you get to customize your mount you get some cosmetics and a little bit of a challenge at that super secret 13 that's not secret anymore and um yeah i i don't i don't first i mean i what did they say that the max item level or the max reward is going to be equivalent to heroic raid you know once probably once you get up to that item level and i don't i don't foresee us uh needing to do delves in order to get into heroic i think um you know mythic zeros to grab some gear for for people like us um to get into mythic a little bit quicker hitting those mythic zeros through fives uh mythic um you know sevens eights nines uh next season um i think that's going to help us slow a, a lot more than probably delves i think this is more for your open world players yeah, and you know something that that kind of risen to prominence since the introduction of Mythic Plus is you know view, uh, content creators doing the Mythic Plus carries, and I think that this will give those people maybe some more content to, hey, you need the you need the nine delve, let's go in and bang it out yeah. together, or let's yeah. go do the thirteen together, and you know foster that kind of community uh, situation even more. So yeah, now in that I'm open world. Exactly. Yeah. yeah I, that... What I am, sorry. What I am, what I am curious about though is like, so you have to go into these little curtains, I would call it, to enter the 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 delve, right? So mm -hmm. my my curiosity immediately immediately goes to world PvP. Like you're gonna have people just camp in the end, like killing oh, people. Oh yeah. <laughs> They're trying to go in and do their delves. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe you have to go force them to go turn off war, uh, war mode because they can't because they can't get in. Uh, one of the one of the funniest experiences that I that I had when I was playing uh, Season of Discovery was when you were going to Black Fathom Deeps. I don't know. I'm sure you remember, but you had to go underground, swim down, then back up underneath into these caverns to reach yep. the dungeon. There was a whole mess of skeletons just piled up by the entrance because people were just getting annihilated just as they were ganked, trying to go. Yep. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll be curious to see how, how uh, if that has any anything happening like that. Man, in, war in, mode in, off. In <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm definitely I'm, I'm I'm interested to see like how the whole system plays out. It definitely seems like you know another scaling type system like Mythic Plus uh, open world. Um, definitely seems really uh, really interesting. Um, so definitely we'll see where we'll see how how they evolve throughout the expansion because i know that this is going to be the main expansion system so um you know they're gonna and, and they they right on the screen here we see ian talking about just bran in season one you know who knows w uh, what other um champions or heroes that we're going to team up with in season two or three if they even do a faded season four again uh what their powers or anything like might be to uh you know in the new zones or anything like that that we may get so yeah and i saw you can customize brand a little bit too like give them a trinket or or some sort of buff or something so i think that's kind of cool you can like customize your npc to yeah to do the things that you kind of want to do 
in a certain way. Yeah. Pretty cool. All right, we're yeah, gonna yeah. we're gonna go on to our next topic. Talking about scaling content, how about Mythic Plus for season one in uh and the war within? Oh boy. So <laughs> here's a hot topic for both of us. Yeah. So I'll start with the Shadowland stuff because yeah, that's, that's the controversial the, ones. That's the part that's at the forefront of my mind. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even say controversial, but like Blizzard has to do something about the Covenant powers. Absolutely. So I, Necrotic Wake was was I have no issues with the dungeon. I thought it was fun. Uh, I know there were some is issues with the Necropolis up in the air Awful. when you were trying to like pull stuff or whatever. Like sometimes your AOEs on the floor didn't. Yep trigger correctly or something um so hopefully those get addressed wild spirits uh, anyone wild spirits yeah <laughs> Never hit... yep um, awful so i feel like it has to go one of two ways right like with the covenant powers you either have to make it so you don't need the covenant powers to activate the covenant things well i guess it's three ways remove the covenant uh powers for the dungeon entirely or the worst case of those two is that you have to go back to your Covenant Sanctum to oh. pick the power for Necrotic Wake in order to trigger it, because those things are still technically active on your tunes. Yeah. Uh, every time you log in, I see, like, my uh, what's the angel? The the bash of people are like, yeah. this person is soul bound to you. I'm like, oh, okay. Yep. Um, so, that that for Necrotic, or both the Tower Line Dungeons I'm, I'm concerned about, so I'm curious how they're going to approach that. Uh, Mr. Turn of the Scythe, my biggest thing was always the maze. Like, I hope they go the Waycrest route where they just open, open all the doors. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Just go Let nuts. you pick the path that you want. But you don't do want a Chinese spyware weak aura to help you do it? Like, <laughs> right. I mean, come yeah. on. We all downloaded that weak aura, right? <laughs> exactly. Like, I having to use a weak aura to, like, yeah. fix, the, fix the maze for you is, is just, it feels bad. So, I'm hoping they address those two things with that. I remember Miss. Um, the Miss was the first time that like I, um, was actively like, taught and learned to like pull through walls, um, and would do it on yeah. the regular. So, uh, Yoshi, I want to shout out Yoshi for teaching me, um, you know how to pull some mobs through walls, um, effectively, and we would do some pretty fun stuff in Miss. I'm looking forward to Miss coming back just because that was one of my favorite dungeons in Shadowlands. I think it was a lot of people's favorite dungeons, uh, just from some of the tomfoolery that you could do in that dungeon. Uh, I, I, I do share the same concerns about um, your your covenant abilities and stuff like that. Um, you know, I share that same sentiment as you do. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Seizure Paralysis, I'm not too... You know, I, I, I didn't find it too problematic. I, my memory is pretty bad, though, so I, it maybe have been the worst experience of my life, and I just don't remember it. <laughs> um, but the the one thing that really sticks out to me is the platforms on the last boss with the octopus. Yeah. Um, I just, I, it's I know it's a matter of skill issue, but having to break a key because somebody fell into the water, <laughs> like it so feels bad. You know? It feels really uh, bad. Yeah. So, I mean, it is what it is. That was like the only pain sticking point for me in that dungeon. Um, you know, my my fondest memories of uh of that dungeon specifically was, uh, between the between the pirate lady and the big like uh that tide walker, the big yep. the big element water dude, the wave caster, and, yeah, yeah. There was those ogres who would do that straight line ability, and you would do these pulls where you pull. That, that dude with a bunch of those the monkeys and i if i remember correctly the monkey that would throw bananas at you and they cause you to be stunned or slips or something yeah but you would see like people just not paying attention to that ogre would do his line cast and just kill like two of your <laughs> dungeon yeah <laughs> right through people yeah absolutely yeah or on top of that he does the aoe fear which if you don't los it they all run and pull more monkeys and you're just not having a good time at that point yeah did that pull those pulls would either make or break that key i remember that back in the day it was also yeah. when when keys actually first came out was back in um uh, you know back 
But when keys can kind of became more prevalent was back in like Battle for Azeroth. So yeah, at least were first yeah. in, they were introduced in Legion. But I think Battle for Azeroth definitely refined that system to where you did keys. You know, you you you, yeah. you logged on to do keys. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that's what I meant. Sorry. Yeah, the the other thing too is you will have to wonder if they keep it the way that it was in BFA, where the Horde have a different starting starting spot than. Uh, the alliance. Oh yeah, which yeah. I don't think is going to be too big of a deal. I mean, it, it could be tied to whoever the leader is of the party. I mean, right, kind of like how um um Dottie is right now. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like it's a siege. I remember it. You know, I don't remember it being too painful, but I could be quickly reminded as soon as the war within comes out. So, uh, Grim Batol is going to be the most interesting, I think, out of all of these because we haven't done it as a Mythic Plus yet. Um, right. You know, I know they've already said that the flyover is going to play a part in the percentage, or at least a part of the dungeon. Um, and my biggest fear is that the flyover is going to determine right out the gate if your key is bricked or not. Oh, um, I hope not. I hope not. You know, you either. I feel like they either have to make it so that all the enemies that get hit can get one shot so they die easily or you're playing the percentage game where you want to get all the mobs down to like 50 percent range so that we can kind of this way it's not this way it's not like a matter of this pack died but this pack didn't die but these ads in this pack did die or didn't die and just kind of making it feel weird because yeah. i'm going to assume you're, there's going to be specific mobs that you want to be killed in those packs that are going to be painful once you come across them. Take out flying, add more time to the overall key. Eh, I mean, they'd have to shorten that dungeon because that's a lot of trash. That's a lot. You, you're talking like a 60-minute method plus if you uh, if you want to do that. Yeah, imagine. so imagine the perfect scenario. You're, you kill the mobs, you get to your drake, everybody mounts up, and you DC. Like, you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> You've done. Or like you get yeah you get that DC because like you're you know you, oh you're DC'd because you were you know flying where you shouldn't have been flying you know I still get that when yeah. I disengage that hasn't been fixed since <laughs> disengage was hey, yeah. put into the game you know I can't even imagine you know oh we clear the drakes and you everyone clicks on the drake and half the group DCs fantastic exactly uh, I I think the one boss that I'll have to change for sure is the last one um, I remember when. Cataclysm first came out, the dungeons were super overtuned, um, and they ended up nerfing them. But the last boss I remember specifically was like, you had to step inside the little tiny circle of the boss. Yep. Otherwise, he died. And then you had to kill the ads that were coming out to charge the eggs, because if those eggs got charged, that just meant more AOE on your head. Mm -hmm. uh, and you were like pretty much on a fixed timer to get those ads dead. Otherwise, the the drakes that came out just overwhelmed you so they were just too uh, powerful yeah and i think I they casted like mortal if, strike too which was awful back then too yeah, yeah. so like if if they it with the scaling key level i feel like that dungeon would be near impossible at a certain at a certain key level if you couldn't kill those ads fast enough so i'd be curious to see if they change it or not yeah you know what would be cool i, I here, here's an idea that i like kind of uh, going off of what yoshi's saying here um, maybe just take out that whole front section and we just start after we land, you know, yeah, that, that yeah, way that's it, cool. it removes that whole mechanic itself. And, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about flying and you just start the dungeon and, you know, that way you don't have to go through like, you know, a half of a semicircle of, you know, Grim Batal, like, you know, and then you just go do like a quarter of a semicircle or something like that. Where you don't got to yeah. worry about that whole flyover. That would be, that'd be an interesting take, um, on how they start. I mean, you know, I haven't seen, you know, dungeons start in a different location otherwise, but I mean, it is a landing spot. So that's got to be some type of like checkpoint system um, that they might have implemented. If, if we're landing there, it's got to be some type of like spawn point checkpoint type thing um, that maybe we could even just start the dungeon there. Yeah, for sure. I, 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 I want to say in time walking, those mobs die very easily to the drakes. I think if they kept it like that, it'd be fine. Like, mm -hmm. like three hits with the drake and they're all gone. I, I just think it'll be weird because you then have to buff, buff the drakes with the key level in tandem. You know, right? So, 
Yeah, because now now you're talking about scaling um damage of the Drakes per Keystone level and everything and the health and you know you got to make sure that they're doing percentage old damage to the mobs to make it worthwhile. There's just a lot of tech that's going to be involved in making that dungeon work correctly. Where you might yeah. that that might literally be like the worst dungeon of season one of the War Within. Yeah, and I can see some weird tech where like a stealthy. Assuming they didn't, the mobs didn't have true sight, like run all the way past the first boss. I don't know if you can enter that area without having killed the boss, but pull more mobs out of that middle area into the first boss. Probably before people start before people start flying their drakes and just nuke them all together. Yeah, maybe. Or uh, but yeah, if they're even affected by the bombs, because I remember some mobs weren't affected by the bombs and some were. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're gonna have to do they're they're that that's gonna be a tough one. And and my biggest thing on that dungeon is the checkpoints in that dungeon. That's a long frickin' dungeon. It is a lot of like no mounting other than the Drake riding in the beginning, that vehicle um combat, which historically vehicle combat has not been Blizzard's forte in yeah. dungeons and raids. Um, but the checkpoints in that dungeon is absolutely the worst. Um imagine wiping in that dungeon on the last boss and you gotta run all the way back from the start of that dungeon that that's just going to feel awful. So they they're going to have to do something yeah. with checkpoints in that in that dungeon big time. Yeah, that place is freaking huge. So it, yeah. I mean, I think I think it's pretty much like a reskin of almost Ironforge almost, you know. So you're running around a, almost a a major city, you know, in a dungeon and it's like, you know, you're yeah. They they I hope that they are taking uh that all into consideration in their in their process of rebuilding that dungeon for for mythic plus because a lot of these dungeons that they're bringing back weren't built for mythic plus anything prior to legion they were just built as dungeons for theme and for story they were never built yeah. for competitive uh a competitive gameplay mode so um i'm really looking forward to seeing being able to you know if if they do get them up on alpha or beta to test them um if they're available if not then hopefully um you know, we'll see it. We'll see it a little bit before 11.0 drops for the for the expansion. Yeah, I think that's probably the worst part about it too. Is is hey, you're mentioning that pre Legion the dungeons were designed for it, and so far a lot of the dungeons that they've revamped for Mythic Plus that were in Kata have just not been very well received. So right, Throne. Yo, but Throne yeah, anyway. Throne, Vortex. Uh, yeah, Vortex was all. Oh, the, all they needed to do train. to make Vortex. Oh, the train. Don't even get me started on the train one. Um, Vor uh, Vortex. If Vortex would have been a lot better if they, we could have mounted in that dungeon. That would have made a difference in that dungeon. If we could have just killed the mob, mounted, gone to the next group, you know, up and down, because we're outside, I think that dungeon would have been a lot better. But keeping the, uh, the no mount restriction in that dungeon, I think definitely killed it. Yeah, definitely. I think um um adding on to your your um your Shadowlands ones here too um you know with the covenant abilities and everything what um you know it definitely would be ass if we had to go back to you know the covenant sanctum for each you know to change each ability or whatever Oribos or whatever before we do those dungeons um you know what do you think of them adding an NPC um to the beginning of the dungeon to just to give you um covenant abilities right then and there like you know kind of like a uh, do you remember the the one uh, affix during Shadowlands? What was it? Um, crypt, cryptid, cryptid, where you you got like um, a buff. You you clicked and you got like a stat buff and you ran with it the entire dungeon. Um, yeah. Something like that. You know, what do you think of uh, what, of something like that? Do you think that would make it better, or do you think we should just remove it completely? I was gonna say, I think if you're gonna go that route, you might as well just make it so anybody can do it, because at that point, that's basically what you're doing anyway. Mm hmm. I think, that would be my... I'm not gonna lie. I really loved Wild Spirits. I know a lot of hunters hated playing within the reticule on the ground. I know it was kind of, uh, you know, oop, shot it on the ceiling, you know. But I mean, if you had the macro to, um, um, place it at your cursor, um, you know, it definitely worked a lot better. Um, but I, it'd be cool to play with Wild Spirits again and have, um, you know, sh um, uh, blink sh soul shape blink. Which I, I think we get to play with time running in ten point two point seven, which I'm really looking forward to having that back. Um, I think that's a cool, a cool ability. Um, so I, I'm I'm hoping that we get them in a way, but I hope that it's not in a way where it's complete ass and it breaks the whole immersion of 
get to the dungeon, run the dungeon type thing. Oh, I wasn't I wasn't talking about the abilities themselves. I was talking about like in Necrotic Wake, you can click on those big juggernauts to get a buff that lets you kill all the mobs a lot faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As being a carrion. Be... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So make sure I was saying yeah. something. No, oh, yeah. There's the ability though. But yeah, I doubt they bring those abilities back. You're still gonna move mobs out of my wild spirits? Well, that's not gonna change, I know. I... <laughs> <laughs> you did that before, you're gonna do it again. I mean I know. Yeah, I know you're gonna troll me. It, it's totally fine. We got an ad break coming up here in 30 seconds. Anyone want to add anything in while we got a uh, while we got 30 seconds? Uh before we go to our next uh topic and you got anything else you want to add real quick, X? No, we're good. Yeah, we're good. All right, so we're going to we're going to chill here with this ad and we're going to move on to our next slide which is <gasps> the raid. I just gave you a sneak peek. So, uh little spoilers here coming up, so if you don't want to be spoiled about the new raid, that's the next topic up on our uh our docket here so we'll see you right after this uh 90 second ad break appreciate you guys grab some water we all need water <laughs> trying to see i'm not really big of a basketball fan but i'm trying to follow the lakers this year are you but they're playing the nuggets which i guess is supposed to like win the whole thing so i have stopped watching the nba I'm not a I'm not an NBA. I am, I uh, it, my my soccer team local they lost. I'm all done with soccer, and uh, so now I'm back on you know the draft, seeing who who our Bills pick up next Thursday, and with all the crazy oh, shit. next week already. Yeah, next Thursday draft is next Thursday. Definitely looking forward to our rebuild and not making the playoffs again for another. We get this brand new stadium and then we lose half of our half of our team. <laughs> yeah. I gotta get out to a game this year. I'm yeah, one one or one or two more games at the old stadium before the new one gets uh finished. It's definitely on the docket. Definitely wanna do that. So <laughs> I'm waiting for them to build a stadium at uh in Vegas for the Oakland A's. That's gonna be a night. If if it's anything like the concept art, man, I I I'll be back. <laughs> I will be yeah. back to go to that stadium. It looks amazing. The only thing I didn't like was the the way they display the player info. Like, it seems kind of cheap with the projector. Yeah. Style. Well, hopefully it'll be a little bit better. I mean, I'm sure yeah. Ve Vegas has the tech to make it look nice with LED screens and stuff. Yeah, it's like the city of lights, and you're gonna use a projector. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I gotta get back to Vegas soon. I gotta get back to the win. I love the win. It's so nice. So nice uh, staying there. I gotta go there when it's you know convention time, so it's cheap. You know, not seven hundred dollars a night. You know, when I can pay like a hundred yeah. bucks a night. <laughs> yeah, that's that was my place of going when I was younger. It was the encore. Uh, the win. You get to watch the A's in Sacramento. I did see that they are. Uh, yeah, I saw that they uh, are coming back to uh, they're moving to Sacramento. They signed a deal there to come down. So, All right, and uh, we're back on that ad break. So thanks, everyone, for bearing with Twitch's ad and making sure that they get their revenue on top of our, our revenue. So, uh, All right, so our next topic is the first raid of the war within the Nerubrar Palace. Nerubrar Palace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Not really much info has been released about the raid, aside from the size of it, I think. Um, there's been some photos shown of what the raid looks like. Um, so, just to kind of get into my frustrations with raid in general. Well, I won't even go that far, but... When when Blizzard always says the raid's going to be epic, it's going to be huge, it's going to be the biggest raid we've ever done, that always triggers the red flags in my head of... That just means we're going to have a shit ton of trash clear. That means we're going to have a ton of zone area that we need to run through. Uh, and those are always kind of like the things I think kind of, you know, uh, you kind of beat on morale sometimes. Is You got to come in, you get half the people go AFK during trash you, while you're clearing the rest of it. Then you get to the boss, and then somebody else goes AFK. And then, you know, like I said, it's just, those are the things that always kind of, 
have sirens in my head when I hear that kind of description. So um, beyond that, you know, I like the I like the style. You know, the whole spider theme. Uh, eight bosses, I think, is a great size for a raid. I was never a fan of more than ten. Um, the small raids, I personally don't miss them. I know a lot of people have asked for them back. Uh, the way, at least the way they did the Crucible of Storms, I think was very awkward because it was like right in tandem with the other the raid that was out at the time. Yep. Uh, so I kind of made this weird like, do we bother doing this raid? Like the gear wasn't that great, um, so I didn't really, you, you weren't really invested in it too much. Um, so yeah. yeah, I think air raids is good, and seven seven to eight, even nine for me is maybe a little pushing too high. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a good size. I agree with you uh, on the size. I think anywhere between seven to nine is a good size for a raid. Where I do disagree with you, I thought Crucible of Storms was an amazing raid, and I thought that boss fight slapped. I thought it was one of the best boss fights that they've ever made, um, and how insane that it was. Um, <laughs> I know it's a really harsh take, and you know not everyone has the same thing. I will agree that it was an odd placing, but man, I do love those like solo boss or two boss type dungeons. Um, I, I or raids. I, I think they're. Um, I think they're cool. I don't think that they should come in at the same time as like timing wise. I, but I do think we should see more of them maybe, or even just like one per expansion, you know, just to give us something else out of the seven to eight, you know, boss thing, but give it to us like, um, you know, as like a side thing to do, you know, for, you know, I, 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 I think we should have them back. I, I do like them. Um, but I do agree with your si the size eight to nine seven to nine I think is the perfect you know especially for um you know I I'm I'm not gonna say this is for great for race the world first people but you know it does help with scheduling stuff like that but it also helps like the adult raiders um you know like us you know we are adults with full time jobs and we are raiding at um you know at that mythic level I think that eight boss is like that threshold to where you know you can really work on those eight bosses and feel like you can accomplish something in a raid tier. Yeah, yeah. And and to go back on the Crucible, like, I, I think with the shift to the seasons in, in World of Warcraft, uh, I think in general it's going to be difficult for them to incorporate that size of the raid without it affecting what the main raid was supposed to be. Correct. I think, like, I'm not opposed to them doing it. Um, more so that I think if they're going to do it, they'd either have to do it, like, as an intro raid for the start of an expansion, or they're gonna have to leave it for like a, as a season four, four. end of content, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. That's fine. Around. I'm yeah. okay with that too. Bring it back. Yeah, yeah bring, my, my bring Crucible my, back, maybe. Uh, my, my, <laughs> big, my biggest thing was Crucible wasn't even the fights itself. Like, I have miserable experiences from LFR in that place because there oh, was yeah. a lot of mechanics where like you couldn't you couldn't get through with the people weren't paying attention. But right. Um, aside from that. The gear, the gear itself, like maybe, maybe this is me being a gear oriented person, but the gear was awful. Like I think there was every piece of trinket that you get had like some negative impact on you on top yeah. of that. So yeah, yeah, the gearing was a little weird. Um, and and the fights, yeah, they definitely, I, th they were difficult, and they were not made for looking for raid difficulty at all. Um, yeah, maybe you know, maybe it was just their their introduction to test something in the middle of you know people were still progressing on Jaina, and they release this two boss raid and, and this insanely hard you know mythic phase of a of an end boss of this that didn't even reward gear that was comparable to Jaina and Jaina still hadn't been dead yet so, yeah it was yeah. or it was dead but you know by the masses it wasn't dead you know no one really knew yeah hey here's here's sort of my hot take on these small raids I think if we're gonna do a small raid like this just make one difficulty if people can do it great if people can't you know, yeah. I'm not well, saying too bad, but you know, like it's gonna be such a small piece of content that I don't, I feel like it shouldn't matter too much. But maybe people would get pissed. But, but I I think if I think if you're gonna put out a two two boss raid, three boss raid, whatever size, and you're gonna have incremental difficulties on it. Like getting past heroic, I think at that point it's kind of like, well, why they already did it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, why? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I yeah. I feel like if they were gonna route, they like. I wouldn't even care if it was LPR difficulty if, if if they wanted it to be, but like I said, just making something so small but have like the same progression method as what you would consider with like a raid like this, I think would be 
would make more sense to me at least but i could understand if people don't feel that way we could probably Um, have a whole stream talking about just you know do we bring back the one two boss raids (laughs) yeah yeah definitely for next time Um, folks (laughs) yeah (laughs) Uh, yeah, exactly so heroic week is coming back to to the raid um when they first announced that both mythic and, and heroic would come out to in dragonflight i really didn't care because it didn't affect us um but the reasons that they gave for it coming back did make sense to me where people were feeling the need to burn themselves out on mythic plus that very first week uh i always felt that you know as someone who had the progress of us where you know we we would clear normal in one week we would clear heroic in maybe two or three weeks um and then for the rest of the tier we're progressing through mythic i would feel like that uh having that week where you're capped on how much eye level you can get out of mythic plus almost kind of made it feel like what's the point um but having experienced it the other way as well during dragonflight where they came out simultaneously you know i can i can have a little bit more appreciation for having this extra week to like go through heroic and see how the fights are and then you know the big, the bigger thing that that I saw for one of the reasons was at least Blizzard will then be able to collect more data if people are only doing heroic, and right. then they can do like a big tune before Mythic comes out. Right. Well, I think and I think uh, what I heard was that they're only doing heroic week for the first raid, and that's because of the eye level disparity at the beginning of an expansion. I didn't hear heroic week is correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that heroic week is returning for uh raid two raid three of expansion um i think they said that because i think ian said it in his uh his interview um was that you know we're 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 at such a disadvantage of eye level wise you know you're farming mythic zero so that you can do the raid whereas when you're coming into raid two your gear is much more closer than where you are at the beginning of the expansion right I that makes sense. But at the same time, though, I think these past two seasons, they've pushed the eye level like so much higher they uh, have. than they have before. Yeah. So thirteen item levels higher per season, yeah, than they ever yeah. have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're right. So it'll be interesting to see if they continue with it. Like I said, I honestly, I like I said, we it was never really a problem for us, so I could care less. But it makes sense why they would do that. Yeah. I like I said, it was just that little inconvenience where like I'm pushing, trying to push Mythic Plus, but I can't because we have to wait a week. For when the, the real season comes out, right, right. Um, so I know they talked about this. The what's next panel and BlizzCon was out uh, that they wanted to add. They wanted to use this raid with its theme of spiders and webs and all this stuff to introduce verticality to the raid with how uh, a lot. I guess a lot of up and down mechanics, which you know I. I mentioned this to you before i hope i just hope it doesn't go the sonarth route where like you can't get your footing right so you're just slipping around the, the oh, entire God. fight that mechanic was awful uh, but yeah like i i don't have a problem with it I, I know for some people they might experience vertigo when when they deal with these type of mechanics hopefully they don't make it too too intrusive to like enjoy the fight itself yeah um but i i'd be curious to see uh what they do with it i know i know you had some yeah, ideas yeah what do you uh what do you think of like so we were introduced to these climbing world quests in uh, Dragonflight. Like, do, what do you think? Like, since it's going to be spider themed, do you think like we're going to be climbing like spider webs from like maybe platform to platform, and or maybe it's just like a outcrop on a on the ledge on the outside of the the battle arena, and we just get to shoot the boss like from a different ledge. Like, maybe something's going to be coming up that we have to avoid, or something's coming down from the top, and we have to like jump down. Like, do you think we might see that climbing mechanic? Uh, where we have to grapple onto a wall and and get to somewhere like for the verticality, do you think that might be a thing? I, I think it's an interesting idea for sure. I, I would, I could see it working in like a fun way. The the problem with that I see a lot a lot of times when they introduce these weird mechanics with uh with with these gimmicky things that you got to do during a fight is the first several times it's fun. Once you're like progressing mythic on the six hundred pull, like it's not so fun anymore. Right. But at the same time too, like I, I feel like I would never I would never stop laughing if I'm like if we're all climbing up the way like the climbing quest works. 
we're all climbing up simultaneously, and you just see somebody fall like past you, bat <laughs> like to the ground. <laughs> oh, I know. And just watch them die. But I, I think it's a cool idea. I, I'd be curious to see how they implement it. I yeah. think if it becomes like too impactful on the fight, though, that that's where you kind of start hitting the okay, this isn't really fun. It's because we're dying to this so much type of thing. I hope they learn their lessons from Tindril on um, adding outside mechanics into a boss fight. Um, you know, yeah. not that the dragon riding was the uh, the reason that Tindril was so hard. Um, it just, I don't know. It felt clunky having to stop get a feather, fly to a platform, and then restart the yeah. fight, basically. That just, I don't know. It was a cool idea. Yeah, Bestalak, yeah. Best, you're right. Bestalak in Firelands was one of them where you, I mean, what was that? It just dropped a uh, just dropped a web, and you just clicked it, and you went up, and then you fought on top, and then you can, yeah. you had, like, not fall. If they do some similar tech like that, that that's definitely, you know, that. Or, you know, now with the new yep. tech of... Uh, climbing quest we might see something like that similar to or, or grapple hooks or something um you know we may see that yeah Bethel like was definitely a decent enough fight that didn't seem it didn't seem like to take a toll on you that you had to keep taunting the spiders because i i, I want to if i remember correctly like you had to taunt the spiders like just attacking them didn't work in order for them to come down but i could be wrong on that um but yeah if they introduce mechanics like that like i i think that's fine yeah um like I said, I, I I would just be wary of them introducing something. What would be fun, like within the first dozen pools, but then by like pool one hundred, you're just kind of like, I'm over this shit. I don't want to spend fun yeah. anymore. Yeah, definitely. All right, so moving on to the very rare loot. Uh, so I'm not a fan of very rare loot. I get it. It makes sense why it's there. The reasoning is sound. I I don't hate on them for doing it. It it just feels very bad when you don't get it. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think that uh, I think there needs. I, I don't want to say I hate using the word bad like protection because I hate fostering to this mentality that like you should get rewarded based on time of, of attempts. Personally, uh, but that's a whole other discussion. Yeah. I I just think it. I just think it feels bad when you have all these items. Uh, that the boss can, can these bosses can drop, but only that one specific item um, is above the rest, like exponentially, not just a little bit. Right. Uh, so I think the biggest pain point you you mentioned this earlier was the rings off of the first raid. Uh, those two rings, were just yeah. they were just best to slot for every single person, um, and those are the situations where I feel like it feels bad because everybody's gonna be fighting over it yep um if you're a guild like ours like we don't go too in depth with the parsing and the you know who's gonna get the point one percent benefit out of this over everybody else uh so it just feels like this necessity to keep reclearing keep reclearing until everybody gets that item yeah it definitely adds like a lot of um you know sour points because you know you are gonna have the people you know and and, and you you are going to see that it is does uh, you know in the beginning of the expansion we saw that it was simming better for some classes you know uh demon hunters was a class um that it was just leaps and bounds better for um as one of the classes and mages as well uh pretty much anyone that did that that fire damage but um it was great for everyone you know like you said and and it did it caused that pain point and you know who do you give it to um and you know who's it going to benefit the most type thing Who's how's it gonna help the raid the most? So yeah, having it on that very rare loot track definitely made it feel bad. That was I know that was one item, and I I think they they learned from that uh, to where they changed how very rare loot drops in a, a Mirdrasil, which is good. But I think very rare loot. I'm I'm with you. I don't like it. I don't like it um, as a thing. Um, but um, you know if they're gonna make stuff that is you know game changing, you know maybe. I don't know. Uh, maybe bad luck protection is a good thing for some stuff like that, but you know, we could. That's a whole other topic of conversation. <laughs> yeah, and like, like I'm not opposed to, to bad luck protection. I like the legendary. I, I would have to assume that, like, as you know, this is the first lever legendary I ever got on my warrior that was current tier. So, mm -hmm. you know, you always have this concern that, like, is is the content tuned around having that legendary? So, does having that item impact me as a as a player like what i can do and what i can push because i don't have it 
Um, those are the situations that I think feel the, feel the worst. Like if it, if a rare, very rare shrinkage jumps off correct the uh, augury, um, and I'm, we're pulling week after week after week until we get it because it hasn't dropped yet, then you know you start to have these inner inner battles within the guild or the raid about why are we still pulling for Ak when we can yeah. move to mythic or you know those those petty arguments that tend to sprout you know once in a while about um, what like you said what benefits the raid the most so yeah um and as a player like sure killing bosses is fun but you don't want to be the one who's falling behind because you did you just didn't get lucky enough with that drop yeah very oh. true i got yeah, a ties in. oh go ahead yeah i was gonna say well that ties into the vault and the other question that i have for you so i mean if they're gonna have very rare loot then um you know, um, I guess we can tie this all together in. Um, how do you, what do you feel about like dinars or bullions, you know, whatever they're calling them now, being added right from the beginning instead of season four? So if you're going to have these very rare items, you know, and if it is going to be game changing like that, say that we're going to keep using this ring as an example, folks, just because the ring was, was a game changing item for a lot of classes in season one. And it is coming back in a nerfed version in season four. But I, I'm going to guarantee you that a lot of casters and a lot of people are going to be going for this ring, um, even at its nerfed version. And I think it's still going to be doing an insane amount of damage uh, that you just can't pass it up. Um, how do you feel about, you know, dinars being introduced earlier at maybe a different acquisition rate, um, per se, as a form of bad luck protection so that you can you can get these very rare items? Yeah, yeah, I... I... I would love to see the dinar added to a regular season. I, I like you mentioned. I think that um, if you were to do it, I think you would really have to elongate how fast you acquire those items, um, because you know, with season four being what it is, you uh, you can understand people wanting to push the content fast enough because it's an accelerated it's content they've done. Yeah. And yeah. it's a it's an accelerated season too. It's a shortened season. Yeah. So you want to have the most the most opportunity to benefit from having those items to, you know, blow up bosses and, and what have you. Uh, but I think in a regular season where the content's new, I think, I think they would have to go like the early catalyst route where like several weeks past the regular season, you start to introduce them. Mm -hmm. And maybe instead of like once a week, you do once a month until you have an item that you want. I mean, I would be fine with them even doing like one or like only one dinar, maybe even two. Uh, just to per season, you know that one item that you really want, you just can't seem to get. Yeah. Hey, boom! You buy it, and you're you're done. I'm not against um, that either. So I I feel like that would be the best approach in using those. Um, and to kind of segue into the grave vault, it's like I I just don't like the grave vault as a system personally. Um, I I really feel like bonus rolls were better, but I also understand the frustration with like always having to go and get your rolls. Or having to go do something to get, earn your rolls that you to roll on items that you wanted. Yeah, I just I just feel like it provides better agency with what you're trying to do or what you're trying to get out of a raid or a dungeon or whatever. Um, with being able to roll, I'm going to roll on this boss so I can try to get this item, you know, more so than others. But well, I I think. Oh, go ahead. I, I was going to say, well, what if well, what if we, they introduce some type of like reroll system to the Great Vault? How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean that that would that would make the most sense for me personally is like the you know I I and it goes with the great vault just the system in general like the whole point that you get for not for getting shit on with your luck you have to go and buy your sockets which personally I wish that sockets were introduced on gear as as a normal thing like they used to be in the past not some arbitrary yeah tertiary that you have to get lucky on or you know, input on onto your gear specifically. Yeah, uh, I agree. That they could use those coins is like you accrue. You have two or three weeks of bad luck. Boom! You can spend however many you want to make it to re-roll your entire vault at least once to give you at least an opportunity to say, "Hey, this vault is crap. I didn't get anything. I spent hours clearing all eight dun eight mythic plus dungeons on the twenty. I spent you know nine hours out of the week clearing all these bosses on mythic or rook, what have you." And for the time you invested, you just got kind of crapped on with, with the loot that you got out of there. 
or it maybe have been like a situation where like you got the first row is all cloaks and the second row is all boots and the <laughs> third row yeah. is all yeah. is all bracers and it's like that feels really bad feels really bad especially when your embellishments on that on that piece of gear and you're not you're not replacing that for the season because they already announced that embellishments are coming back with crafted gear so you know you you get that you get that piece automatically in your vault and you're like well not replacing that doesn't matter what it is it's either going to be transmog or it's going to be you know cash how do you feel about like maybe like so since we're on that the great vault topic and using uh you know that uh, bad luck protection or whatever we're using those tokens of merits that we get maybe use those tokens you know maybe we acquire them differently or um more you acquire them more but you maybe you can re-roll like a slot in your vault your great vault or re-roll the entire vault for a certain number of currency xyz however you you know how what do you think about that yeah i i, I mean there's the the premise of, of of that idea would be like you just have agency and in, in what gets in your what's put in your vault at least mm-hmm. a little bit um and let's say you, you filled all three rows of the or filled all three columns of the raid section right mm-hmm. <clears throat> if you if you can't pick anything out of there you're gonna get what six coins is it six it's like yeah. three per yeah or two per uh two per section that you fill out yep um maybe you take those those six that you earn from the three and the next week comes and you get shit on again with the same row you didn't get nothing nothing you can use you can Use those six coins you earned from last week and re-roll the entire row, and they'll give you more. I mean, you would have to kind of bake into it. I feel like as well that you don't get the same items brought back up. Right. Um. That might that might be even a little extreme for Blizzard. I feel like, but I feel like it would make the most sense. Um. But I know there's even been situations too where they talk about like being able to freeze an item. Like if you get lucky with two pieces of gear. You can freeze one, so you can hold on to it until the next week comes up, and then get it that way. But I mean, I they haven't implemented that or done anything about it, so I don't know how how close in the future that thing is even going to happen. Man, even like adding on to that topic too, if you were able to re-roll, I would love to see like I in the UI of the of the Great Vault. Oh, excuse me. Um, like saying like if in the dungeon part, like what dungeon that piece of gear came from. Like so, if, <clears throat> like say gloves dropped from Atal and Zar for me, I would love to see that these gloves came from Atal. Like you know that they are, but like for people that don't know, I think that'd be nice. And if you could re-roll like a dungeon's loot, you know, say you know you want a specific piece of gear from Siege, and um, you get your your tokens of merit, and then you can just re-roll that one tab from uh, you know Siege of Borealis just to try to get another piece of gear from Siege. You know, kind of yeah. almost making it like kind of like a a uh, an a cool slot type machine where you're gambling you're 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 gambling but it's with the gear and with the tokens of merit like it's already a system that's in place um but you can you know kind of uh, improve it so that you can target those pieces of gear better um and then maybe not and then if you do it that way maybe we don't have to you know bring dinars or bullions or whatever they're called um yeah. in, in the play at all if you could just re-roll your your vaults like cuz I definitely liked um being able to roll on specific bosses like you know if you want a trinket off of that boss and it was a bonus roll you could get that trinket off of that boss you're saving all your rolls for that you know or so, something similar to that I right think. yeah yeah yeah, yeah and I, I i think content creators have spoken on this ad nauseum but i think the worst part about the vault is how great it is the first few weeks of you getting loot from other and then there's like this really hard um cap where like now everything you get from this point forward is going to be crap because the items that you're looking for are so specific right? and that you can't really benefit from anything else. Right. And that's where maybe a system where the bullions would come into play. It's like, you know, I- I'm going to use uh, Zane, for example, when we're running, when we're running Mythic Plus and, you know, I think Zane hasn't gotten the piece that he has needed out of his vault for probably two months, three months straight. You know, that's where it feels bad. It's like you are going for that one piece of gear and it's just like, you know, I, you're never going to see it. And that that's where it feels bad. So maybe like that's where bad luck protection comes in or, um, you know, or maybe like adding like an in-game wish list or something of like something that you definitely want, like where you're trying to target at that myth track level. Um, you know, it definitely, there's definitely some definitely big improvements that could be had with the great vault and maybe adding a, some different, a different form of bad luck protection, but having bad luck protection for players. Cause 
you know, people, the way that we play the game is that we are very gear oriented. I'm also, you know, we are, we're, we're achievement and um, cosmetic oriented too as well. But, you know, for us, you know, we're, for the mythic raid community, um, you know, we are very gear oriented. We want to make sure that our character is, you know, as best as it can be while we're playing. Yeah, definitely. I, I just think the way it currently is, is not very good. So I hope they yeah. make some adjustments to it or something, but I think where it's at right now is, like I said, first few weeks, it's great. Get everything as an upgrade, but once you get that point, it's kind of like you know, your your needs are very niche and very specific. So Yeah, yeah, right. You know, you're, you're trying to target that one special piece and you're just not getting it. So we got an ad break coming up here in 30 seconds here. Does anyone have anything they want to weigh in real quick before the next ad starts? about um you know great vault or um dinars or anything like that and we can answer that real quick for you before we get to this ad i'm so i'm so interested to see how booleans are going to work in season four i know there's some stuff on the on the ptr right now but um how the acquisition of them are going to be during the raid for season four and how quickly we're going to be able to earn them. Yeah, but I think it's silly that they just said, you kill bosses and you get them. What? Yep. What? <laughs> yeah, that's literally all it said. Kill bosses and get bullions. You get one and then you get two and then you get three. <laughs> I'm glad they changed it back to once a week though because that would have been silly. Yeah. To do it every two weeks, I think. Yeah. It, just get that rotation done. Let people do it for three weeks, and then what? Well, I mean, time running's coming out, um, the second week of ten point two point seven. So, you know, you're gonna lose <laughs> most of your people there. So, um, yep. Yeah, I think it's it's I think it's a good idea that uh, we get we get uh, we get that. Did they hit, do we have a uh, we don't have a a date for ten point two point seven, right? Uh, no, no. Just the patch next week or not to patch the season season seasons next week so it'll be at least it'll be after mother's day for me so that'll be good but um <clears throat> cray cray at work soon for mother's day yeah that's our busiest holiday valentine's day is a busiest single day mother's day is um the busiest week oh gotcha because it, it's um the week leading up to mother's day is teacher's week and nurse's week and then on friday um in the u.s is deus mias madres um and then on sunday is mother's day so we have really we have four um main holidays that go on during that week so it's just all crammed into this, this one week where it's just awful <laughs> it's awful for yep. wor awful work wise it's a great great cause you know mothers need to be celebrated they also could be celebrated all 364 other days out of the year too you're welcome let me see if there's an arrangements in uh vegas oh there is there is they uh they rented a, a hummer to a convention two years ago they were wild Jeez. yeah all right, we are back. Thanks everyone for bearing with the uh, Twitch ads again. All right, uh, we can, like I said, we could we could talk about Great Vault and we could talk about Booleans and Bad Luck Protection on a whole other stream. We could probably have yep. a whole two hour discussion on that. So we're Definitely. gonna, yeah, we're gonna move on to our next topic, which is Dragon Flight or Dragon Riding, and uh, what its new name, Dynamic Flight or Sky Riding. I don't know what what. I'm not sure where they uh where they're going with the name because it says switch between sky riding and steady flight, which are the new two flight styles. Um dynamic flight being the dragon riding that they introduced this expansion. Um and then you're gonna be able to toggle between the two in game. It's a five second cast. Uh you just literally throw it on your action bar and you know, you can turn any of your uh any of the four hundred and sixty four mounts that they confirmed um to uh Turn into into uh, dragon riding or sky riding or dynamic flight, whatever they're whatever they're calling it. They got three names for it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the old settings are going to be um, 
you're going to start learning your dynamic flight talents uh, at level 15. And as you're leveling up through level 70, so through Dragonflight, you're going to gain your um, dynamic flight talent points. So you're no longer going to have to go back to the Dragon Isles to uh, get the uh, little dragon icon. You know, uh, those are just going to be for cosmetic achievement only. Um, they've stated that. So while you're leveling, you're going to get that. And you will be getting uh, dynamic flight uh, very early on. So um, there's going to be a whole new UI. And then I think one of the other things that you're going to be able to switch between is um, that Whirling Surge and the 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 Charge one that we got on the Algarian Skyrider for the, pre, um, the pre-purchase of the expansion. I think you could pick between which, uh, you know, uh, ability you want to uh, use moving forward, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, I don't know if I like the the storm one. Yeah, I've used it. I've used it in uh the racing, and it's, when you actually like, I don't really know how the ability is triggered, but when I have triggered it, like you can't even control your mount. <laughs> like yeah. you, just, you just shoot forward and you can barely turn left or right. Yeah, yeah, it definitely locks you in that like moving forward ability and. I also don't like that you can't really track your charges really well in the UI that they gave you. Like, I really wish, um, I really wish they would, you know, you got, somebody made a really cool weak aura for it, but like, again, like that's on the topic of add-ons and weak auras and blah, 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 blah. And I just, I feel that, um, you know, you shouldn't have to have a weak aura to track your stacks, uh, in order to use that ability. I think that should have been baked into the the base UI as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm looking um, forward to it. Yeah, I am too. I mean, 464 mounts, that team is going absolutely nuts, making sure that we have enough of our old mounts that we've spent years, 20 years, collecting these mounts. We finally get to use them in The War Within. You know, I, I one of the mounts that I'm really looking forward to, I have two of them that I use quite a bit. I have Ashes of Alar and uh, the Razor Talon of uh, Alyssa Resor, the, the, the Firehawk. Um, I, I am really looking forward to dragon or dynamic flight with those mounts but you know what mount that i'm really looking forward to using Go for it. one of those discs because you do literally like skateboard moves like when you like you know surge up or whatever you're you're you know your hip thrust in and you're kind of looking like old tony hawk pro skater type on those discs i can't yeah wait. i saw that um i saw that there was like they were talking about it about the disc specifically i didn't see what what the details were but, but yeah i yeah. think it i think those discs were probably like the most cool coolest in concept but in action they were very like underwhelming but to see them if they're going to do stuff with it with the flying uh the dynamic flying i think it'll be really good yeah that right when this goes live that's going to be one of the first mounts that i pull out onto my on my bar and i'm definitely going to be <laughs> disc riding <laughs> for a lot of the next expansion i think it looks just so cool what um what mount are you most looking forward to uh using well the one i'm looking most forward to looking to use but i'm hoping that it, it would be something that i can continue to use is the uh nimron's head that's the that's the one i'm looking forward to yep um that does have dynamic I, flight yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna see how they incorporated the flying, if or if they do anything different with it to make it do that. If it's just flying, if it's just flying the way that it normally does, but like have faster speeds, then I probably, I'll probably switch off of that and maybe even try one of the discs myself. I'm gonna tell you, I did watch a few videos on some of the dynamic flight models. All of them got reworked animations. Mimiron's head, the the mouth actually like opens and closes while you're flying like it is <laughs> the cool. funniest thing in the world i'm i'm definitely That's awesome. it definitely makes me want to go back and farm like invincible and memorand's head a little bit more because some of those some of those mounts that uh uh that they really gave dynamic flight to are they're looking great novel posted an amazing video um of it, he he just was on stream and he was just like here tell me what mount you want to see and he just flew around for people on different mounts just to show them what it looks like with with the dynamic flight and i just i thought that was one of the coolest uh videos and uh yeah i'm really looking forward to all the dynamic flight and uh i'm looking forward to i mean 464 mounts that's that's a lot of mounts that yeah. we're we're getting right at 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 launch there i just 
I just hope they chill out on the fucking trees, though, because, like, <laughs> you're flying yeah. through the air, and you gotta clip a tree, and you're done. <laughs> Wait for your vigor to come back. I mean, we're going underground, so there's not gonna be any trees, right? Yeah. It'll be rock. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a stalagmite. Fuck oh, yeah. you, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, definitely looking forward to the expansion of dynamic flight and, being, and actually being able to use our, um, our mounts that we've been grinding for and paid money for. I mean, there's mounts that people have paid money for that, you know, they couldn't even use, I mean, they could use them, but they weren't dragon riding mounts, you know, the dynamic flight mounts. You know, we've, we've spent money on those products. We can't even use them. So, and there's still some that you, we've spent actual in real life money on at the shop that doesn't have dynamic flight. I know that they're working on it and I know, you know, close to 500 mounts is really good to start the expansion with. Um, so kudos to them for getting at least this many uh, ready to go for uh, at the beginning of the expansion. Definitely. Yeah. So the next big thing that we're getting with the War Within is we are getting a new allied race. We are getting the Earthen. The Earthen are your old, older dwarven rock type civilization that uh, pretty much had their memory wiped. Uh, when the the well of eternity exploded and um really cool customizations i'm not going to go into the deep lore of earthen i'm going to let people learn that themselves but uh we're going to talk more about like just like just about the class or the race i'm sorry not the class um and what they are yeah we're we're, we're getting there len we're getting there You're jumping ahead buddy um so the earthen are announced as a horde and alliance allied race um, at the beginning of the at the beginning of the expansion, I think you have to do a few things in um, the Isle of Dorn, and then you'll be able to unlock them and uh, be able to play play with them. A um, lot of cool, you know, customizations. They are the number. Uh, they have the most customizations launched with an allied race at the beginning of an expansion ever. Um, they just they have. I feel like. I feel like they had to with another dwarf thing. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Like they had to go crazy with. They had to go crazy. They had to go hard in the paint with it. And um, the, you know, the, this picture here just you know shows it justice. And I mean, I've always wanted to play a female dwarf that had a beard. I mean, I'm looking forward to that too. Um, you know, get to customize your your gems and your all this and like your literally like even the clips in the hair you get to customize on on these guys. It's just. It, the level of detail is just unreal. And yeah, we, definitely. we've they've also have their uh their racial abilities have been discovered. Now, again, this is alpha, all subject to change, but this is what is being tested right now. Uh one of the biggest ones is the Azerite surge ability, where we get our first empowered ability that's not on a an evoker how do you feel about that x all right i'm really curious how they're going to implement this because like for the most part i feel like abilities that were racial you you would typically if they weren't utility based like like with when i was playing shaman and dragonflight uh you know my my racial was binded to my cooldown so you know having it tied to to be or to be empowered like if if you have to, if you can bind it to another ability like i feel like that's not going to work with that specific mm -hmm. racial you're gonna have to kind of um have it on a separate bind but if you have to go out of your way to push this button for however long you need to cast a 2.5 second cast like you, you better be be doing some some giga damage or healing because like if you're if you're Sitting on that cast and not being able to use your like class abilities, I feel like that's it's never going to get used otherwise. Right? Yeah. Do you see them expanding the uh, the empowered uh, mechanic to more classes? Uh, yeah, for sure. I I'd be curious to see what direction they go with it, though. I mean, because I think I think if you do empowered stuff like this, the the biggest thing you're going to have to do is make it ranged. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you have to stand still or be in melee range for these kind of casts to go off, uh, for them to, I it, it feel like it's just gonna be too much downtime not being able to get it off. Uh, if somebody just like takes two steps and now they're out of range and it cancels. Yeah, I could see like him going to like maybe like the hunter class or 
uh, the mage class, um, the shaman, yeah. maybe elemental shaman gets a empowered ability. Um, if they're going to expand it from the evoker, um, from the evoker spells, you know, I think this yeah, is I've... this might be their way of testing it. I was gonna say that I think the biggest thing too is like if you're gonna invest the amount of time you, I mean, not that it's a lot of time, but if you're gonna invest casting a power spell, just in general, I feel like you're gonna have to make it a very, it's either gonna have to be a huge or long dot, or it's gonna have to be some crazy sort of burst damage for it to be, you know, feel to for it to feel worth casting, because like with the with when I was playing Devoker with the Fire Breath, it was either or. Like if you were in a single target situation, you only did one one tick of it, so you could get the dot the dot yep. on the on the enemy, and then you just spam it, disintegrate into it while the dot's dealing a lot of damage because it's lasting for so long. Whereas if you wanted AOE, you had to go for the full three, so that way all the dots hit all the targets, and they were, you know, they were they didn't last as long, but they were hitting a lot harder for them to melt the enemies. Yeah, I mean, oh. I mean, looking at this, it looks like you know, tier one, it just deals fire damage. Uh, d tier two heals ally. So I'm gonna guess that it does all three of these if you empower it. So it's gonna deal the damage, and then it's gonna heal allies. Um, and then tier three, it deals damage additional to the highest health enemy. So it, a single target ability, a single target ability with a heal. In a cone, in a frontal, in a, I don't know, and then a single target ability, a heal, and a smart damage ability in an AoE pack, maybe, from what it sounds yeah. like, if you, you know, so maybe you don't, maybe maybe you only have to empower it to the one in order to do, you know, your damage, you know, but it is a two minute cooldown, so I mean, you know, I, I don't know, like, that, that just seems yeah. like, very situational. Um, you know, and what's going to be the most effective way to use that? And then, you know, is it going to be tuned overpowered to where you see like some people, you know, switching to earthen for, you know, this ability to kill some bosses, yeah. you know, for some tech, you know, that we might not know. So, and yeah. like I said, with this, this one specifically, I think it'll be interesting because it's going to, if you can't bind it to something, then that means you have to go to your way to cast it. And like I said, if it's not doing a ton of whatever it is supposed to do, you're just not never going to push it. Right, exactly. Yeah, I guess it's gonna. It's just gonna be how it's tuned and how it's utilized, and you know, uh, and the wording is very short on this description. So I guess actually getting into Warcraft blogs and digging down deep to seeing like what it, what it's actually doing and how it's actually doing damage and stuff like that too. So yeah, the other interesting one on here is um I, I'm sure everyone's you know aware of the current funny meme the chewing rocks cat out there the the ingest minerals where um you pretty much eat a gemstone and you have the benefit of uh <laughs> of well fed you know the crunch. Yeah, that was Len's meme. yeah the crunch crunch i think leah len definitely talked about or shared that that was uh that one's really funny um that's that's cool you know you never have to eat food as this race but uh you know if i think they bring the flavor pocket back you know you're not really eating that much food either which I really hope they bring the flavor pocket back, by the way. Yeah, I agree. Or at least not make it such a pain to have. But yeah, I like the I like the racial. Definitely adds a nice flavor to it. Yeah. Not 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 trying to make a pun, but it does have a very nice aesthetic um, incorporated with the whole earthen thing. Yeah, so. you can make puns, dude. It's okay. <laughs> Well, and, I, thought I, I didn't realize it until I said it. <laughs> and and then you got your your basic uh you know lesser ones you know increase finesse when gathering so you know they're probably gonna be really good at mining uh or herbing uh skinning um base armor titan rot frame you know they get armor from equipped items is probably gonna be you know one two three percent you know they get a little bit more armor so they take a little bit less damage. Um, and then why'd I wonder when you gain experience from exploring a location, you gain additional exploration experience. So, you know, maybe you, uh, if you want to level one of these guys, you, uh, maybe you just go exploring, you know, just go on your dynamic flight mount and just go, go explore. And you can e level by <laughs> exploring new, new areas. I, I, it's very inconsequential. This, this racial 
but I don't like it because you're going to explore the zone within like the first week and that racial serves zero purpose moving forward. Yeah. But like, what about like, um, oh well, yeah, because they probably are going to be starting at a higher level. So I was thinking like all the other parts of Azeroth because they haven't been to the other parts of Azeroth. You could just like, you could just literally just like unlock all your flight points and then you could just go discover things. And just oh yeah, the, true. Level, level the character yeah. up just by going from flight point to flight point. <laughs> But the uh, the experience isn't even that great, though, is it? No, so, it's not. Uh, I got that to make it that yeah. super super buff for it to matter. Yeah, but, yeah. I think it's kind of a weird one. Or okay, you're going into the what is the the new zones, and you discover it, and like okay, now that racial just basically doesn't exist at this point. Yep. Then then yeah, uh, I I agree with you. Like once you're once you're done exploring with your earthen, it's you you have no racial anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. And this is apparently, according to some of the Twitter people, this is their um screen that you'll be the creation screen, loading screen, uh, something um and valuable for the Earthen, um, which I thought was kind of interesting because it looks very Titan esque, and it looks uh like there's definitely some like, um. Titan chambers in the in the right. So, like I said, we're not going to go deep in the lore, but uh, yeah, I thought this screen was pretty interesting to share for the uh for the Earthen here, uh, very Titany. Um, yeah, definitely Titan flavor. Yep, a lot of Titan flavor. Um, these are data mined um heritage armor, possibly uh class armor or race armor uh that you could obtain um for the earthen they haven't confirmed where you get these yet they're just data mine color schemes of uh, what gear may look looks like the helm's a little unfinished on the model too but definitely sticking with that gemstone theme you know maybe you know i know dren i have the the jewel crafting racial but maybe jewel crafting would have been a better uh you know racial for for them to have as well since they're very gemstone oriented yeah like squeeze five or and a gem pops out or something like that. Yeah, something. Or it's maybe something with like prospecting. You know, you get more gems from prospecting. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. I like these armor for dwarves. I feel like dwarves kind of get the shaft with transmog, but these look really good. Yeah, they look good. I also saw the size comparison. These guys are a little bit bigger than normal dwarves, so um, that's going to be interesting to, you know, <laughs> you're going to have two, di yeah. two different size uh, dwarves running around. <laughs> Uh, they have, uh, they're going to be able to be shamans. Uh, so shaman totems have been data mined as well of what, uh, they're going to look like for the earthen as well. Again, very gemstone oriented. Um, it seems like it's going to be a big, big key to their civilization. So, you know, once we get into that and their lore, you know, we'll, we'll, sh we'll see like what the, uh, gemstones, uh, really are going to do for them. You know, I wish I could appreciate totems more having play shaman, but there's like just so much ground clutter on the floor you, you never really see them that well yeah absolutely you you there's so much stuff on the ground that you really don't see them unless you're a drenai and then you can see those giant like naru beam totems like <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah if you're a dwarf yeah you really don't see the dwarf totems or even like the shaman ones or, or i'm sorry the troll ones you know those are just tiny little sticks in the ground like you barely see them too but yeah i definitely feel you know Totems were so big and, you know, um, you know, they were easy to kill in like arena and stuff like that. Um, and maybe they made them small just so people didn't kill them or something in PVP. Um, I don't know. So, but yeah, they're, they're very underappreciated part of the art style uh, of the game. Uh, the next big thing though that has been data mined. So a little bit of spoiler here. One of the races that we're going to meet are the Haranir, um, in, um, the Scarlet area. Apparently they are a, a race that has, uh, just been down there in the, the in the jungle section in that area. And, um, a lot of people are theorizing that, you know, they're a, an elf troll hybrid type race. And it, they, um, you know, maybe, you know, they fled during the uh, the War of the Ancients and the Well of Eternity, um, you know, when that collapsed during the uh, during the, the, um, the first Sundering. 
um, and maybe that these were just trolls that never fully, um, that fully developed into the elves that they were being developed into, and they maybe they ran or maybe they hid or something like that. But what's interesting about them is that right now they're not confirmed as an allied race at all, but they have the most cosmetic customizations that leads to allied race potential. The next closest to these guys were the Volpera and the Nightborn that had full customizations at the beginning, and they were originally unlocked as an allied race. Yeah, it looked good. I mean, you know, when I first saw them, I didn't really think about it at the time, but when you pointed out that they're kind of elf trollish vibe, like I can, I can really see how they they almost do look like a mixture of what a night elf would be, like not to be sexual about it, but like if a troll and a night elf had sex. <laughs> that's yeah, what it would yeah, look. or you know, just like the the dismemberment of you know a mistransformation or something like that of you know, yeah. of what happened, and maybe this this sect of uh, trolls just kind of just ran from what was happening at the Well of Eternity, and um, you know, they hid in the, in mid-transformation. It's, you know, maybe like kind of giving me kind of like werewolf vibes, you know, like the, the, the person who's like you know, half-transformed into a werewolf, and they're hiding all the time, and uh, you know, this is just, maybe they felt like they were too deformed or something like that. So it would be interesting to see the lore of these uh, Haranir, and when we meet them in the War Within, and it's just an insane amount of uh, customization. They all they have a little bit less than the Earthen, but they have way more customizations options than the Nightborn and the Volpera did at launch, which definitely raises some flags to show that that they may potentially become uh, an, an allied race. A lot of people are calling them Dark Elves, probably because they're in the dark. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see where yeah, uh, we'll see where these uh, come into play too in the story again. We're not going deep into lore, so just a an interesting thing that we've 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 saw uh, at the beginning of uh, the alpha here with a little bit of data mining. More options is yeah. always good. This is the big one that we're going to talk about now. Dark troll elves, yet. Yeah. <laughs> this is the big one we're going to talk about. So, in an interview with Ian, they confirmed that Drakthir will be able to be other classes in WoW. Uh, it is not going to be at launch. It is going to be probably a half patch or a uh, one of the major point one point two patches, um, but it will be playable earlier er, earlier in the expansion than later in the expansion. And one of the biggest things was that um, you're going to be able to stay in visage uh, visage form um, and stay in combat, so you're not going to have to be uh, a dragon, a drakthir while you're casting the abilities. So um, they are still working on the animations for a lot of classes. Um, they're probably definitely not going to be demon hunters, death knights, um, probably not monks either. They might be able to be monks. We're not sure, uh, but they are definitely as of right now, not being demon hunters and not being death knights, uh, which was confirmed. Um the art team is definitely working on how to acclimate them into um, being other classes. Um, so there's going to probably be a whole acclimation quest line that we'll see them be. We'll probably have to un like do like an unlock type quest. Um, and they they've stated that um, that's going to work kind of like an allied race. So we'll probably have to un like we said unlock it. Uh, they're very open to suggestions on how the what they're going to do with the class and what they're going to do or with the race and what they're going to do with the class i can see some really disgusting open world pvp with some uh race class combinations of drac there can you imagine axe if you're out in war mode and some dude comes up that's a drac there mage and he just soars down on you hits you with his you know dragon riding stun or dynamic flight stun opens up on you <laughs> with some like disgusting pyroblasts, you know, ability from whatever yeah. invises and then he soars away. Yeah, that's that's pretty wild. I, I I'm really curious too like how how they're gonna implement the racials just in general because uh 
you know, the 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 drag there themselves have the double jump or the capability to d j double jump. So whatever classes they're gonna allow that the drag here drag here to play now, those classes will have double jump. Uh, double jump, and yeah. that'll allow allow them to tra traverse, uh, you know, higher elevation more easily. Um, so, I I would I would be really curious if they allow that to happen. Um, especially like if if in more PvP situation you're playing in your uh, visage form, and you know you think you're fighting in a blood elf or a human or whatever, and you know, they just double jump away from you. <laughs> you yeah. can't keep up with them because they keep, or they jump off the cliff and they're they're safe because they can float down. Well, you know, you can't do anything about it. So, I think it's cool. I like. I think the. I, I really wish, in tandem with allowing you to play in the visage form, that you would be able to that they would allow, those bigger those bigger models of the, of the track here to be playable as well. I think they look really really good, but. I understand that the whole armor thing is probably not going to make sense with the whole um, scaling of it because they've mm -hmm. got to adjust the scaling of the armor to do that. So, the Abyss Informer, I think, has been a highly requested feature for, for them. So, absolutely. Least, I, I know they're not getting it for, as the Voker, but to get it at least in some manner, I think, is a good is a good thing for the game. Yeah, I, I'm definitely, I, I, I would probably play, you know, maybe a Draxir Mage or. Um... A Draxir Shaman would be cool, you know. I think it's just going to be cool how they um, acclimate them into being other races. I mean, you know, now that we've introduced ourselves into them, like, you know, how, like, like thematically wise, like, how hard could it be to teach a Draxir to become a hunter, you know? Like, you know, oh, you tame a pet, yeah. you, you shoot a bow, you know? That's got to be pretty easy, you know? It, there, we've done time skips and everything, you know? People can learn. They seem to be an advanced race, so, you know, they can they can learn. Yeah, I think a Draxir Mage would be pretty cool too, you know, in visage form and you know, just playing like yeah. that. I think that's that's really unique too. Yeah, I'm look I'm looking forward yeah. to the different uh, combinations coming out and uh you know what people are gonna how they're gonna make them and the customizations that they're gonna do with them. With the big old dragon tank leading the charge. Yeah, yeah, a dragon warrior. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, with a shield. Oh, that'd be super dope. And then it just flies away. <laughs> Sword, exactly. With this giant bulwark of Azanoth and a, I don't know, some Thunder Fury, and you got this little, little visage form Drak there, and then he just transforms into a dragon and just flies away after he thunderclaps you and storm bolts you to death. <laughs> you know what's funny is when they they made Sor be, you know, like like dragon flying uh, in the last patch. I they had released that Murloc toy simultaneously, and if you click that Murloc toy and try to soar as a dragon, you will fly around as a Murloc. It's oh my the god! Most hilarious thing ever. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. Yeah. That is that's a fun toy. I know a lot of people were using it on our our Tindril kill, just to kind of yep. just to kind of break the uh, the monotony of that fight. So <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing a lot of uh, of combinations with this i think it's i i think world pvp it's going to have some crazy implications with soar especially with being able to switch back and forth the dynamic flight and regular steady flight is whatever they're calling it um just you know get out of combat like can you just imagine a hunter just fly down feign death camo soar away after he sends like 40 pets at you <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think too like my my biggest issue having played evoker just in general was always like you can't mog your stuff because yeah you're a dragon right so at least like i said at least making it available to other classes that, that can play in the message form um they can at least play with with the gear uh, the gear yeah example. yeah the transmog especially with all the changes the transmog that we talked about earlier too i, I think it's definitely going to be a really good um um addition to the war within and i think you're going to see a lot more drag there running around with um with that change, I think you're going to see a ton of them be made. They're going to have to open up more alt alt slots too. I don't know if they're going to do that. Well, servers are. Kind I think of, they are. Yeah, I think they are because of the MOP remix. Yeah, and I, with uh, servers going away too, you know, I guess it doesn't really matter what level or what server you're on. So you can have multiple tunes on all these other servers, and they're still part of your warband. So that makes it easy too. So that makes it easy. So. Um, we're going to briefly touch on this, uh, cause we got our ad break coming up here. 
so we're not getting more. Uh, they went back on alt slots for remix, so we're not getting more. Oh, boo. Ooh, boo, boo. Um, really hot topic right now. I'm gonna go really quick on this because, uh, you know, um, some people are really upset about this. 180 U.S. dollars for a collector's edition because they are including the statue, the Storm Rider statue in the collector's edition thing. So you get your epic edition, um, you get your art book, you get a pen, um, but you are also getting this statue for $180. Like I, I'm used to collector's editions being maybe 100, 120. And that's what I had budgeted for, for the collector's edition. Now it's like 180 US dollars for a statue too. Where am I going to put that statue? <laughs> it's a little much. It's a little much. But statue, right? I know it's uh, it's a bit much. I think that uh, so the problem is that you can't get it without the statue, right? Right. That's why yes. Okay. That's why people are mad. Like they want, they wanted an option without the statue or with the statue. If they would have, uh, well, you know, so you, if you're, if you're willing to invest in every collector's edition since now, I think you put yourself in that situation but yep well, i'm not i'm not i i can understand the frustration if, yep. if you can't get it without then you know it yeah. is what it is would have been nice without so um i i'm i'm in that category of i would have liked it without so um um but i guess i'm getting a statue <laughs> it's gonna go <laughs> it's gonna go behind me i i guess i'm gonna add to the azeroth uh statue-esque background there you go So we're gonna we're getting an ad right. You're getting an ad right now, and then we're gonna finish up stream here. So if you guys got some yeah, yeah. questions or anything, send them in chat, and then we're we will answer them in probably about five minutes, and then we're gonna be wrapping everything up. So for everyone that's subscribed, again, thank you guys for subscribing. You guys get ad free viewing, Twitch Turbo ad free viewing. Really appreciate that. Will I be your daddy? I have the heart. 